What's up, YouTube fam? It's been a second, I know, but I'm glad to see you guys. I'm glad to hang out and show you guys another video here today. We're here at the Magnificent Shop Garage, whatever, which is packed full of bikes right now. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I have so many Cicletas in here right now, it's insane. And we're just gonna be adding more today, guys. I have an addiction and I think I need to make a confession. Be real with each other for a second. I got too many bikes, right? I got, I'm not even gonna count them. There's no point, there's no point in even counting them. So what I'm gonna do to fix this issue with me having such a hard time with saying no to dirt bikes, oh, you guys smidge. I can't say no to them, guys. Whenever someone posts one up for sale and it just looks juicy enough where I have to have it, I go and pick it up. So now I just have a Seattle slew of bikes. So what we should do today is go buy more. <laughs> Why you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked because two things. I bought one yesterday and we'll get to that in a second. We'll have a laugh and share its purpose. And the other one is just too good of a deal to pass up. And again, I, do, I have not picked up that one yet. So when you guys see that one is when I'm going to be seeing it too for the first time. So kind of a cool thing. But shall we go look at the money I wasted yesterday? Yeah, we should because it's fun. It's fun to see when people waste money, you know, on things that they didn't need, that they convince their wives that they need. Boys and girls, this right here is... Oh, can, can some of you tell? Some of you guys who are pros and you just know what bike you're looking at before I say it, can you guess it? If you guessed a 2002 CR250, you are correct with the Mitch Payton lime green pegs. So why the heck do I have this and why do I have this and what are we gonna do with it, right? So believe it or not, this bike has been at the shop garage whatever before. Yeah, this same bike has been at my shop before getting a, a stripped out drain bolt. And when this thing came, I blasted this bike on Instagram as being the biggest turd I've ever seen in my life. Be one of the worst KX500 conversions I have ever seen. Not only did they hard mount the exhaust to the frame, gobbled on the engine mounts that are pretty far away from the engine itself kickstarter grinds on the frame the motor mounts are the old motor mounts cut not triangulated this thing's a turd oh yeah and ugh, oil plug is stripped out completely so it is a 2002 CR250 that was converted to use a KX500 engine. But one of the things I blasted on this bike about is these obscene welds and the lack of ability for someone when they fabricate to just make it a little cleaner, spend a little bit more time here and there. I mean, we, we ground off coil mounts and just left, yeah. I mean, and we, we hard mount the pipe to the frame because, right, yeah, you guys know. And the Kickstarter was grinding into the frame. Ah, that's fine, just let it do that. So I absolutely grilled this thing on my Instagram at London Max, guys. I grilled this bike for just being such a turd. And it's so funny that now it's back to me. Less the motor. I The guy that I got it from, he ended up selling the motor and um he hit me up he's like hey if you want this thing 300 bucks 300 bucks come get it and i of course i'm like well shoot 300 bucks i mean front wheel rear wheel used you could buy a pair of those for 300 bucks right so sure can't lose but then something dawned on me this thing has an important piece that i need yeah so if you guys do not know about these FMF actually was contracted by Service Honda to produce. Um, oh, let me get off this cap. It's nasty. To produce a Kawasaki KX500 pipe that fit to the CR frames. 
and this pipe was on there and these pipes brand new guys these are a pretty good chunk of change and here's the rest of the parts in here that were on it but anyway we need that pipe so the 300 bucks alone was worth it for me just to get that pipe and I would love to just chop up that pipe and make a Hugo pipe out of it uh, you know a nice comb pipe send it over to him have him but I don't know I need to talk to him about it so Steve for watching let me know but either way guys I need this frame for something else so with our Yamasaki KX500 that we're doing I had my fabricating buddy over yesterday actually and we we're looking at this together and what we had to do to make this this next modification where this Y piece right here okay has to clear the exhaust bridge if you you of those who are not familiar with making these conversions uh, may not know what I'm speaking of but these exhaust bridges that's where the pipe goes in and you have to have that clearance to run your exhaust pipe right and if it comes straight into the frame well sorry it ain't gonna work he liked everything else he liked all the other locations and how we can recreate this mount but just a little bit uh you know cut our own piece so it mounts up in in that frame and but we could not figure out how to retain this and get the white piece lifted because this is this is just one big cast molded piece right here this isn't cnc this isn't this is just a cast y piece and these are really hard to cut apart and weld and have be strong to the point where we can send huge jumps and you know not be scared of it but then also like what do we put in between here do we put some some aluminum tubing do we make some uh cnc you know bar that raises it up we couldn't figure it out but now that we have a CR250, let me show you my theory. My theory is literally from this line on both sides, cut the frame here. Why? Because of the linear position of the frame changes right there. That's where our linear position of the frame changes. The strength in this whole piece, you engineers out there would know this, is not in this bow it's back here at this weld and right here that's your load is right here so keeping this piece original right here is going to be absolutely important to maintaining the strength of this so i'm thinking we'll cut it here at that line get a, a cnc square plug to fit in there cut the frame both sides there and then cut just below the radiator mount right here where the other bike comes in. So for $500 on eBay, you could actually purchase the same idea. So what I wanna do is I would meet it, you know, I'd cut because I don't want these bottom mounts. These, those things are garbage. And um, since we need like from right here up to just above this cradle, this already has our Y piece. I'll clear the exhaust bridge. And all I would need to do is clean this up and I would probably, I'd honestly probably just cut these off and make some better mounts because those are just so cobby nasty. Like, I don't want that on my bike at all. Obviously get rid of a solid pipe mount because that's never supposed to exist on any dirt bike ever. But, you know, use this piece and adapt it over to the Yamaha and then it will be so structurally strong because it'll have, you know, a nice joint right here, nice joint right there and that thing will be tough. So that alone right there, I'm getting my money's worth out of that turd. So I'll be able to remove that, that Y piece, vapor blast it, cut it, get it nice and smooth so it looks brand new, weld on fresh mounts to it, adapt it to that frame. And now we're not gonna have any issues at all with that exhaust bridge clearing. I'm so happy guys, like, I was looking online on eBay at the kits that they make for the CR500s. It's kind of the same idea, um, but the main thing was as I needed that uh, that portion of the cradle to make that fit. So we're gonna take that over to his house today and we're gonna get started on this 500. And after that frame is welded and the pipes mounted and that bike's just gonna, it's, it's all gonna happen seriously quickly. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can watch this thing get built i had to put the sunglasses on it's seriously bright out here i'm like squinting into the camera 
so anyways guys yeah uh, make sure you take that little bell the bill icon that just says hey remind me when london x launches a video because i need to see when that dude is posting another video i need to see that updates on this bike so guys on to the other bike we're gonna leave here shortly go pick that up have a laugh but uh it'll be worth it so girls the plan is to today on this video roll this crf back in here but do some actual chop cut welding on the kx500 today get that thing started because my suspension as you guys know from the last video is down at ahm getting absolutely oh my god i'm not giving anything away i'm not giving any any ideas away as where we're going with this but i could just tell you this it is going to be it's gonna be amazing and we'll just leave it at that i'm not gonna sit here and and just boast about it you know but anyways guys so let's go buy this other bike because that's fun and uh decide what we're going to do with that and then load up oh my gosh go load up our uh stinking uh kx yz yamasaki yx 500 i think that's basically what we decided on guys was that we we're going to call this the yamasaki yx 500 or we can call it the kz 500 but either way guys let's freaking go all right boys and girls so we're literally like a block from his house so this next bike that we're picking up right now it's actually two bikes but we're only after it for the one um was inspired by robbie dial uh, a lot of you guys don't know him Robbie's a good dude, follows the channel. He's been a long time subscriber and on his Facebook lately, he's been just crushing it, building these bikes. Um, he's addicted. I think he has a 250 and a 125 now and it inspired me. I mean, I was like, holy crap, I need one of those bad and now. So let's see what I picked up. All right, here we go. Freaking ready. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get it loaded up and I'll tell you guys about it. Uh, I need my old man steps. Old man steps. No. He ran away. He ran away. Soft ties are a big, big help. Oh, are you gonna miss it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I can leave it here, you know. Okay. Take the money back and just say, hey, you know, Steph wanted it around. Peel tank off, blew everything out, washed it out, bottle brushed everything, all the tenders and shit, and took all that out of there. Yeah. And then never put fuel back in. Well, it should be. It should be nice and clean. I don't know if this dude was just sticker crazy or if he actually sent it off to Pro Circuit for suspension work. Well, you'd be surprised how cheap you can get Pro Circuit stickers for on the internet. Are you sure? In the record, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This guy came out of a... California Valley. No, so what I'm thinking... So what I'm thinking is that, that Honda that I just brought over here might try to put that front end on, those, on this because those Showas back in those years were pretty nice. So might try to make some good suspension out of this thing and sure. have a nice T50 to play around on. a bunch of on. leftover parts and shit, new springs, little parts and pieces, little get down brackets and shit. Yeah. For my old KX, when I sold it, I still had them, so. Yeah. Like, 
I know I kept them for a reason. Yeah. Heck yeah. I see all kinds of things I can play with the vapor hone on. Some nice aluminum pieces. Beanie girl. Grab the all the parts bike. Yes, take it all. Yes, please. <laughs> take it all. Kawasaki's man. I have too many Kawasaki's. I need to even out the stable. It's so heavily Kawasaki now. Is it? Oh my god. I'm like, I know. I'm, I used to be such a Yamaha guy and it's not like anything against Yamaha. I just somehow end up with a lot of Kawasaki's. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that thing. That thing was internet famous for a while. Yeah. This thing. Collect some webs. Sweet. All right, guys. So let me give you the lowdown on that. So that is a 98 KX250. And uh, the other bike that came with it is where the motor came from, which is a 99 KX250. Well, long story short, he could not get the title for the 99. He had tried and it needed here in california i'm sure it is in other states too but here in california you got to jump through so many hoops have so many signatures have like original documents to get something that was still in the dmv database but was owed a lot of money on registration too much to the point where it just didn't even matter anymore so he actually found the 98 uh, which is one year older frame style and everything which is fine but um, he ended up finding that for cheap i don't know he didn't he obviously he didn't tell me how much but he bought the roller which is in amazing shape really good shape and he put the motor from the 99 into the 98 and uh it runs amazing it's got a lot of power no weird sounds no weird rattles it sounds nice and tight so it's a complete score i grabbed that those two bikes for 1200 bucks i could not say no i can't say no to that um, I feel like these days with two strokes and how they're just inflating in value, that was just a, a smart purchase. Even if I don't ever do anything with it at all, or if I flip it, you know, do a little fixing on it, get, get it cleaned up. And, uh, but let's unload this pig, look at it and yeah, see what the heck we're going to do. And then we could do some mods now. Now I know too, it was over at the fabricators. I didn't record him. He's gonna be on camera because he's got nice equipment in his shop, which I totally don't blame him at all, to be honest with you. But uh, you know what? I forgot something. Oh, he forgot something major here, boys. Like it's, it's, it's on my mind terrible. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already shaking your head because you're like, Clint, we know what you're doing, bro. You ain't gotta lie put on our stupid face mask oh yeah <laughs> today's flavor Ooh, yes. all oh, work essentials boys work essentials it's so stupid oh so I was like a big big fan of the cotton candies right for for a long time on these bangs for like, I don't know, for like a year. Sure, I'd try other ones in between. I'd try the, the, um, oh, what is it? The star one, the, uh, uh, some of you guys are just, I know you're just shaking your heads right now. Like, I don't even drink those. Those are pure garbage and you're probably right. But man, do they help me get through a day of grinding, boys. Uh, anyway. Let's get back to the shop garage, whatever, where dreams of dirt bikes come true. Look at our toy, fire it up, run some gas into it. Cause uh, I don't know if you guys heard on camera, but he dry stored this thing, pulled all the, the gas out of the tank and uh, used a bottle brush through the, uh, 
the fuel hose, cleaned that out because it had sat for a while and and but then you just let it sit after you cleaned everything out. So it should be should be ready to go. Just throw some gas in it and fire it up. See if uh, throttle sticks wide open or what the heck happens. <laughs> but anyway, let's go play. All right, we're home once again for the first time. Yeah, Kawasaki's guys. I have a couple. I have a couple. I think without thinking, I have five. Now I have five. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So, looks like I have some things to play around with on the vapor home too, which is kind of exciting. Like, look at this PC pipe here. It's got a nice little dinger into it, the hole. But I think I can fix this, guys. I really do. I really do. Factory 304 stainless. Yeah, that'll clean up in the vapor home. Another carbonator. Ooh, this is a good one. Keyhen flat side. PWK. Not bad. It's good carbs. Some radiators for the other bike. All right, we're doing good. 1200 bucks, guys. Seriously. Can't make this stuff up. Oh. So this is the 99 that the motor came out of that he could not, with little money anyway, could not get it registered and titled here in California. So this one is a parts bike. So I'm gonna have two parts bikes. I'm gonna have a, a Honda CR250 and a 99KX250 parts bike. Sweet. I don't know if I should just throw these up on eBay or Craigslist or Marketplace. I don't know. I can't hang on to them. Because I have <laughs> I have way too many bikes. Guys, I have a problem. So look at look at this works pipe, guys. That's in good shape, huh? Holy mackerel. And I could definitely vapor hone this. Vapor hone that. Vapor hone that. Vapor hone everything. Because it's fun. Makes things look good. I think we'll I think we'll do that today. So I mentioned it when I was over at his house. I'm curious if I can get those CR forks to work on here. Because those Honda forks are eons better than these 98. I think they're KYBs. And I know, I know our boys over at AHM, if they wanted to uh, get their hands on those, I think they're 47 millimeter shows on that Honda. They could do great things with that thing. Oh, that clutch feels nice. Guys, I think this was a good buy. We will see shortly, right? Get some feel under. And we'll fire it up. Look on to it, boys. 98 with a 99 motor. Provable. There's a 99. Look at the front end on that 99. Someone was just trying to fake it and make it there, right? So. It's all right. I personally, I like the style of the 98 year more than the 99. I think it was 99 to 02. But look at this thing. I'm kind of proud of this one. Okay, let's get gas and start this thing up. Today's flavor of two stroke is Sunoco 100 with uh, some uh, Lucas Oil two stroke premix. Yep, no gas in it. It took all of it. Sweet. All right, let's fire it up. Oh, no fuel leaking. It's a good start. Is the gas even on? No? Oh, well, that's not your test then. Turn the gas on. You see our little plastic 
feel are filling up. I know there's oil. I know there's coolant. We have gas. We'll pick up on the on this choke. So this thing, he never even wrote it, but it has new piston, rings, and reeds. And he said the bottom end was fine. And he put it together, stored it. Let's see. Oish. Let's see. Let's let it suck up a little bit. I'm not really trying to kick it. I'm just more like trying to get feel to it. All right, now we'll try. Almost. Nope. It's still a little dry. There she goes. Heck yeah. Let's go. Oh, it sounds great. Seems to be a little loaded up. freaking bad guys and nothing's leaking i mean we got good oil height mid window on the clutch i don't see anything leaking did i say that already ah guys what a freaking bargain what a freaking bargain i'm really pumped on that so turn the gas back off guys what do you think? Give the video a like. 1200 bucks. KX250, 1998 with a 99 motor. And I mean, it doesn't look hodgepodge in there. It looks like everything fit and mounted right up. So if anyone that ever wants to transplant into their 98, apparently 99, and I'm sure up to 01, maybe even 02, will fit. But holy mackerel, like this is pretty freaking decent. I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> Go for a hole. But inquiring minds want to know what will a vapor hone do to this rusted works pipe? Let's go find out. Because LMS Blasting Innovations has a solution. Let's load her up. Let's see if I can fit the pipe through here. If not, I can put it through the top. If I have the top all sealed up right now. But I believe, oh yeah, she fits. I believe she'll fit. Yeah. So, bring the camera up here. Oh yeah. This vapor home, guys. Again, big shout out to LMS Blasting Innovations. Um, follow them on Instagram. Hooking up the cabinet, this thing's invaluable. Wait, oh, I gotta hook up air. My new air compressor, my new one, my good one. Pump some air into that. Let's try that again. We'll watch it vapor hone live on steel on a works pipe. Let's see how good it does.
Oh yeah, it's like the magical eraser. So we'll just do a section of this. We'll just do a section of this and then look at it. Wanna make sure and get all the welds here. And so the difference in this, if you guys were to dry blast this, like in a dry sandblasting cabinet, your finish would be very matte, very matte finish, like almost like a chalkboard, right? So that's the real huge benefit with this vapor hone is we can make it blast clean and it will leave a nice finish on it simultaneously. Like it's really kind of an amazing tool. Oh, how it just brings those welds back that works finish over the welds. So this is going to take a little bit, but I'll catch up to you when we're pulling it out. Sound good? All right, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. There's other toys we need to play with today. But just to kind of get an idea, let's pull this thing out. Dump it out. And look at the shine. Oh, not even that much water was in it. Let's take it over here, have a towel waiting before it starts to flash off. Let's look. Let's look. Oh my god, do you guys see a before and after? Do you guys see a before and after at all? So like no joke obviously if i spent more time on this i can get it to just clean raw steel but i just wanted to blast off all the rust but i mean here's the four, four skis right there's the before and after i even hit just the corner of this uh tag it looks clean yeah what an invaluable tool guys i mean it's just you guys are DIYers like myself and you do a lot of your shop garage whatever work at home like myself hit up LMS blasting innovations on Instagram uh, Patrick over there is a good dude and he will help get you set up with your own blaster to put in your shop garage whatever the only thing is you got to have a strong air compressor to pump this thing about or else uh it's really not going to do the job but yeah look at that i'm putting some wd on it so it doesn't flash off again so i'll put that up in the uh up where all the other exhaust pipes go which i have a few and i can't even do that right now i'll set right there but yeah Let's get to work this old thor mx sticker dates itself a little bit so i'm not crazy about the seat cover so i'm gonna hit up thrill seekers or guts or one of my favorites like that and get a different seat cover for it because i'm just not not stoked on that one um i shouldn't play with this i should not vapor hone the uh frame or frame covers or the clutch cover i should save that for another episode but the kid in me here just wants to play with this thing and bling it out and remove some decals and change the seat cover and change the front tire and make this thing look pleasing truth be told the kx500 or the skid in the yamasaki needs our help so after a little deliberation with uh i went over to the fabricator's uh, shop and we're looking at this thing i'll show you what we are thinking so he's the my buddy the fabricating tig welding genius amazing fabricator guy that is going to be doing all my welding he is an absolute uh 
genius when it comes to he he understands structural engineering he understands uh electrolysis and metallurgy he he understands all that he understands the geometry of how dirt bikes are made he he does ride dirt bikes himself so he was worried about so the whole point of these bikes right is they want to rip the front end off when you land hard they want to and uh a lot of that strength in the, is in the head tube in that first six to seven inches of the head tube however we have seen and i'm sure you guys have too on several conversions where they snap right like right here i'll try to find a photo here but they snap and that's because the cradle wasn't strong and there usually is uh like it'll pull out right above the exhaust bridge or on the uh, down down tubes in the cradle like they'll break somewhere in there so there is quite a bit of force when you land that's being applied like this that wants to rip those tubes out so he had a solution to use the pieces of this cradle while maintaining strength and that is to cut up here just to give us as much metal to work with as possible and he said you know let's go right behind let me fix that let's go right behind the motor mounts here and uh what we're gonna do though is we're gonna cut wherever it lines up on the on the 500 we will put um we'll grind these off and use the tubes from the yamasaki up to about here and then this cradle to the same spot and what we'll do is we'll make a cnc plug inside that fits nicely into both sides and then we'll use the uh, engine mount the lower engine mount after we do a seam weld we use the engine mount as a gusset to strengthen it and i thought that was brilliant and then same thing up here he's going to cnc a piece that slides up into the top the down tube and then into the lower part of the y piece so it has a nice solid uh, built plug in there where we can do a nice seam weld and then we'll do a couple additional gussets just to make it that much more strong and i'll cut this piece out get all vapor honed cut off some of these boogery welds uh, he said just to grind through the welds get it smooth and then he'll come in and do a v he'll cut a v into him and then uh, do a nice pass with the tig on it so yeah guys this thing is going to be strong and it's going to look clean is the most important all right warning if anyone watching this has a weak gag reaction or is uh finding this offensive please turn away now as we're about to cut this thing apart and say goodbye to this 2002 cr frame which will just become aluminum scrap but it's okay guys in california um even though an O2 is kind of desired because you can get what's called a green sticker here in California for anything 2002. Everything after 2002 is red sticker, which means you can only ride it in forestry certain times of the year. So it's kind of a desirable frame, but there's just a lot wrong with it, including uh, the VIN, the title's lost. It's been hacked already to fit a 500, and a 500 is not going to go back in this thing. So... If you wanted to convert this back to 250, it'd be way too much work. You can just go buy another frame off of eBay. So we are going to salvage this for the greater good for the Yamasaki project. So without further ado, let's gut this pig. Oh. <laughs> Again, if you're squeamish or have a weak gag reflex, look away. going to make this project so much easier stronger better. all right boys and girls so here's just a look before we go under the knife and clean this up and now our newly refinished cleaned up white piece ready to install so did a lot of work a lot of grinding still need to do a little bit more I need to get down and make a V and all these 
so we can come back and really get good penetration on these engine mounts. But I cleaned them up the best that I could. Gave them a better shape so they're not so gobby looking. And vapor honed the whole thing. And it looks brand new, guys. How rad. How rad is that? Let's go. That's sick. So as the sun sets on another day here on the not so smoky Central Coast, California, I appreciate all you guys who have hit me up and just said, hey, we know there's fires out by you. We hope you and your family are okay. I really appreciate you. You guys, you know who you are. We're getting some clearer skies today and it's nice to see a sunrise on the sunset for once. But today, guys, I cannot complain. Uh, another blessed day to just be me and love doing what I do. We scored this incredibly saucy. I mean, this Kawasaki is just, she is a sweetie. And I am so stoked. I mean, 1200 bucks, guys, for the two bikes. And I feel like I've always been very black and white with you guys on how much I pay for projects and, and my intentions on what I do with them. This thing, honestly, is just, it's so good. I don't know if I really want to do much with it. Um, it's kind of cool as is. Obviously, I hate the seat cover, but that's okay. We can go on hating the seat cover because that's easily changed. But everything else, I mean, guys, this bike is fairly solid. I don't know what else to do with it. Uh, I would imagine at some point, Pro Circuit had a hold of this bike because there's com compound and rebound stickers from Pro Circuit on it. And I, anyone can get these stickers. So I don't read them to them too heavy, but those they don't give out. Uh, but those Pro Circuit stickers on the shock. So, it, you know, at one time, I think Pro Circuit had their way with this because this bar mount isn't very easy to get. Um, so they had the suspension. I wonder if they had this pipe. And then uh, that ignition cover, again, is, is one that, yes, you can buy on eBay and things of that sort, but they're not everywhere. And so it uh, tells me that this thing, at one point, just like all dirt bikes, right? At all point, at one point, was uh, well cared for and probably had some awesome parts. And uh, after that, last time I started, I have started it since then. Now it kicks like first or second kicks. So I think the carburetor just had to hydrate and really fill up all the little orifices, get all the air out of the bowl. And now it, now it runs good, like first kick every time. So rad bike, just don't know what to do with it yet. You might hit me up on Instagram if you guys got any ideas. I am talking with my brother here currently. And uh, he's saying we should do like a throwback Spitfire Kawasaki team bike. I'll show you here. So that's an option. And I'm just toying. None of these are set in stone. I love the look of, I think it was a 98 KX series. They were like a purple green plastic mix those things just i remember as a kid those things were the best like they look the coolest not sure so you might need to get at me on instagram and let me know your thoughts but as for that bike cool moving on since we last spoke i have been just working on plotting this bike out trying to figure out exactly where to make my attack cuts obviously i want to leave a little bit more than uh, we're planning for. You wanna leave some overlap because it's it's easy to take away, but to add it, eh, well, we need tight, tight clearances. So um, now that we have <coughs> our, look at the color difference here, guys. You'll love this between uh, something that's vapor honed and something that's not. So I was just kind of putting it up and I mean, the geometry, it fits the same with the sweep of the down tube down to the pipe, uh, excuse me, the tubing towards the rear foot pegs. And um, yeah, I was just looking at the radius. They are pretty similar all the way up. So I think this was, I know it was a gamble, but I think it was a good one. And, uh, but now we have a Y piece. I'll clear our exhaust. So what I've, so, Thank you big time to a lot of you guys that uh, stuck through and watched this whole thing. 
Um, if you guys like dirt bikes and you watch the whole video, click that subscribe button because I tell you what, if you love dirt bikes, you're going to love this channel. That's all we do here. We don't play around with anything else. Uh, we stick straightly dirt bikes because they're badass. They're fun. So definitely um, do me a favor. These videos are free. You don't have to pay a dollar for them. Uh, not a single cent. The best thing that you could repay me with is just a like and a subscribe. Also on Instagram, I'm almost at that 10,000 mark. And if you want the inside scoop on projects that are coming up and leaks as to, you know, what you might see in the next video, definitely go ahead and follow me on Instagram and you'll get to see all those. And also that the, the Instagram is what I use for my comment section because YouTube doesn't want me to have comments anymore, which is fine. They basically asked me that I, or it shouldn't ask me, they've told me that if I don't remove the past videos that had my kids in it, I wasn't going to get my comment section back because it's their it's their uh, campaign to protect uh, underage minors. So I agree with their ability and want to uh, protect the minors, but at the same time, I'm not going to take down videos that I love to share and and especially you know share with you guys and then for the memories for my kids. My kids rewatch videos of like of old race days and stuff like that, and it cracks me up because they they like reliving the past and, and seeing you know how they did and all the great times that we had. So having said that, I use Instagram for the comments. Um, so guys, we have nailed a huge huge hurdle and checked it off our list today. We made our cuts on the frames today. We are now in the, I would say, I wouldn't say the final, but we are heavy into the modification and fabrication stage of this thing. Uh, so on the next video, uh, talking with my guy who's doing my fabrication, uh, we are going to make our final cuts on the frame, start tacking things in place, and um, adding strength supports and really making this thing as rigid and strong as we can. Also, that service Honda pipe that I got for the KX500s, um, I am going to fit that up and see if it'll clear the geometry of the frame. If not, then we'll make some modifications for it to clear. Um, going to be talking with our boys over at Rocky Mountain, ATVMC.com, getting some parts ordered as well with uh, Wrench Rabbit. Um, and then I've already been in contact with our boys at Aeromoto. They're going to smash out some awesome graphics for this thing. You guys are going to be blown away. AHM suspension has a suspension currently and uh, again another dime piece you guys are just gonna love to see and uh, yeah guys really really cool stuff coming up for this thing um, so what we're gonna do is we're not actually going to have um, uh, every video be like in a series about this thing we're gonna have several bikes actually that we're gonna be doing in between this because I think a lot of people don't understand that it's not as easy as uh, just weld it together and ride it. There's a lot of uh, very fine moving parts that have to be considered in doing these kind of things for strength, rigidity, longevity, and serviceability. So there's a lot of abilities there. And uh, so taking that into to thought, we need to take our time with this. Approach it very methodically. So the end result will be one badass 500 that you guys would uh, be stoked to just seeing the whole build process of. So uh, what do we have going on? Um, for you that have stayed this long, I'll tell you. So now we got the, the KX250, the 98KX250. We'll be playing with that. Also, I am bringing in a 2006, yeah, a 2006 KX250. Another Kawasaki, right? Oh my gosh. Guys, I love all makes. I am not brand specific. I love Suzuki. I love Kawasaki. I love Yamaha. I love Honda. I love KTM, Husqvarna, SSR. I don't care. Dirt bikes are badass. I love them all. All years, all makes. You know, I have my favorites of those years, but I love them all. So don't get tipped up that I'm just like some Kawasaki guy all of a sudden. I don't even know how that happened. But uh, bringing in an 06 KX250, and uh, we're going to be in, in like a two video real quick video series uh, building a um, R rendition if Kawasaki made a two stroke for 2020. <laughs> so you guys better check that out because we're gonna be going a little bit overboard too with what we our interpretation of what we think Kawasaki would do with the 2020. It's a lot of vapor honing, a lot of Cerakoting, uh, Polysport kicked down that new restyle kit for us and but I think you guys are gonna be stoked on the direction that we take this because this is really really a knockout so we're gonna be playing with some Kawasaki's in the future always dirt bike stuff here on the London Mex channel guys so thank you again I love every single one of you 
I'm going to get out of here, go eat some dinner, call it a day, and uh, definitely uh, keep planning and plotting. So subscribe, stay abreast of what's going on with the 500 project, then also R325. Uh, going to be doing some more videos on that, uh, a shootout against a brand new uh, YZ250, or I shouldn't say brand new, but it's new, new, it's like an 18. And we're just going to be doing a comparison. Uh, I'm going to switch, riders, we're going to switch back and forth and just say what we like, what we don't like, and you know, it might show me things I need to improve on that, or heck, it might tell me that I knocked it out of the park and it's an amazing bike, right? So, anyways guys, love every single one of you. I will be talking to you really, really soon, that's a promise. Peace out, have a great night, stay safe in this COVID stuff, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Peace!